Hey, everybody. Everybody doing okay? It's not too late to run. Yeah, nobody got up and left, so you're going to hang out? All right. Praise the Lord. I won't be before you long. I just got a little bit of something on my heart. <clears throat> it's going to feel good to get off, too. Praise the Lord. Father, I just thank you and just ask you simply this, that you give us ears to hear what it is that your spirit is saying today. That's all. And that you will give us eyes to see and hearts to receive. In Yeshua's name, in Jesus' name, amen. All right. <clears throat> Y'all want to know why uh, sometimes I have difficulty in even wanting to get up and preach? You want to know why? because I have to live through some things during the week to get here. And it's always been that way, and it's never been anything different. Every Thursday I got to teach, I got to live through something. I got to live out the scripture or whatever I'm going to talk about. So even when I don't have anything, I'm like, it's got to have something to do with whatever trial I went through that week to sharpen me. But it's okay, because you know what my response is? If you know me, you know, what, what do I do? Say what? Praise the Lord, yeah. <laughs> I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth, no matter what, all right? So listen, <clears throat> in this week, I've been really blessed because I've had people uh, call me, uh, text me that I haven't talked to in quite some time and say, the Lord has put you on my heart. And they said, you know, I've been praying for you. I don't know what's going on, but I've been praying for you. And I'm like, praise the Lord. Thank you. And I'm like, listen to the Father. He's touching people's hearts and they're interceding on my behalf. Yay. But you know, he does that for us, not just for me, but for others. I pray for people I didn't even know before because the Father put them on my heart. All I had was a face, and sometimes I'll find out I was praying the correct name, and I never met him. Go figure. Just saying. I'm going to lay down a foundation for you this morning, and I'm going to keep it very, very simple. And I'm going to keep it simple because I don't want you to try to find a way out of it. I don't want you to try to reason a way out of it. Okay? You ready? All right. Turn with me to the 23rd Psalm. Actually, I'm only have one verse from the 23rd Psalm I'm going to read, but anyway, just want you to practice turning the pages anyhow. How do you get good at something, y'all? Say what? Yeah. Is it any different in the Word of God? What do I always say about the Word when you read it? To read it what? And you're practicing because when the time comes, what's going to come out of your mouth? Okay, the Word of God. Oh, man, you guys are smart. Yes. Do you mind if I kind of read it the way I always read it and pray it? You know, until I get to the verse because I'm going to go to verse 3. Lord, you are my shepherd, I shall not be in want. For you make me to lie down in green pastures, you lead me beside the still waters, you restore my soul. You lead me in the path of righteousness for your name's sake. And this is what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about his name. And I'm going to focus on his name because you've been getting teaching on spiritual warfare, you've been getting teaching on identity. And I submit to you today, by the end of this message, if you're listening and you hear 
you will realize that some of your identity has been stolen by the enemy and you have the power to get it back and to walk in it. Are you following me? But his, but your focus must be on him and not on your... Thank you. <laughs> because we die to our... Abner, praise the Lord. <laughs> So I'm going to give you the definition because we've been taught to pray in the name of, right? Name of Jesus, the name of Yeshua, right? You've been taught to pray in his name, correct? Now, a lot of people I hear when they're praying over the years have been praying like they pray that name as if to invoke some kind of power or something. Am I right? This is what it means here in the 23rd Psalm. This is the definition. <laughs> it's an appellation or as a mark of memorial of individuality. It is honor. It is authority. It is character. Okay. Matthew 18, 18, Yeshua says, Truly I say to you that whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, I say, if two, two of you agree on earth about anything they ask, it will be done of my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I among them. I'm going to read you the definition of name from the gospel. Appellation. Mark of memorial, individuality, honor, authority, character, renown, report. Very rarely do you see the, the, the words meaning the same thing from one book to the other. But his name remains what? The same. His name is his character, is who he is, Right? Remember when Yeshua got baptized in the Jordan and they heard a voice saying, what? This is my, and who I am. We know, I've said this before, in Jewish custom, that meant that a son came of age. They took him into the square. He's up on the platform and he says to everyone listening, this is my beloved son and who I'm well pleased. Meaning what? He has my name. He has my authority. He speaks for my house. When he's, when he's speaking, he's speaking on my behalf. That's simply what it means. Right? So when Jesus was baptized, so what was God saying? He's speaking on my behalf. That's my boy. That's my son. All right? Stay with me. Now let's turn to some scriptures. Because I'm going to lay a foundation. Now I've laid that little bit of foundation. This is where you get trapped and you can't get out. Because I will not give you my opinion today. Okay? John chapter 14. I'm more than halfway done. Isn't that amazing? Are you there? Let's just start at verse 5. Thomas said to him, said to Jesus, said to the Lord, Lord, we do not know where you're going or how can we know the way. And then Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my father also. And from now on, you will know him, know, and, know him and have seen him. Now, Philip said to him, show us the father. And it is sufficient for us. <laughs> then Yeshua said to him, have I been with you so long? You have not known me, Philip. He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? 
The words that I speak to you, I do not speak of my own authority, but my Father who dwells in me does the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also in greater works than these he will do because I go to my Father. Whatever you ask in my that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my, twice, wow, I will do it. If you keep, if you love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray to the Father and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever, the Spirit of truth, who, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you, and I will not leave you as orphans. And a little while longer, and the world will see me no more, but you will see me, because as I live, you live also. At the day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you, and he who has my commandments and keeps them. It is he who loves me. It is he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Make myself known to him. I'm going to submit to you just based on my experience. This is the only thing I'm going to talk about today based on my experience in talking to people. I get, Most people that I talk to, and I'm not talking outside of the church, I'm talking about inside of the church, they know about him, but they do not have a relationship with him. This whole scripture is about being in a relationship, being relational. You will not die to yourself if you don't have a love for somebody. You will not compromise who you are without a love for somebody. Remember what I told you the last time I preached? What did I say my first love was? In the beginning, it was me. I love me more than anything else. And anything that didn't jive with taking care of me and making Lester happy, well, huh, I don't need you. Hello? And you were the same way. I know I'm talking to myself. We that way on different levels. Is that right? Correct? But whose example do we follow? If you want to call him Yeshua, you want to call him Jesus, whose example do we follow? Whose image are we being conformed into? Did he show us how to live? That's not the scripture say. He was tempted in all ways as we are, yet without sin. It's in Hebrews. You can find it. You got homework. There you go. It says it. Was he without sin? Was he a man? So could he be tempted? Was he tested? In all of the ministry that he did, who did he glorify? So, in all that we do since we've been born again, if we've been born again, who do we glorify? Are we doing it? And if you're going to say, yes, Lester, we're doing it, then why is the church so divided? I don't know. Well, I submit to you this. Remember, we had all that. Uh, I talked to you about what happened after the conference. And I said the foundation must be built upon is Christ, right? Is you sure? Right? Upon this revelation of who I am, upon this knowledge of who I am, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Well, the gates of hell has prevailed, has been prevailing, has been successful because the foundation that has been laid is not on Christ. That's why Aaron not sitting in here. He don't want to be responsible for anything I say. 
But listen, we're out of time now for me to placate you and to go, oh, it's okay. No, get on your knees, repent, and walk as Christ so that the men will see your good works and be drawn into the kingdom. Die to yourself that he may live. Without that, there is no Christ living in you or through you. I don't care who you are, and I don't care what you say. People have been telling me things. They say, they say, but their fruit is different than their spoken word. Your walk must be consistent with your talk. Your talk must be consistent with your walk. That's why I keep saying speak the language of the kingdom and nothing else, or otherwise your mind will not be renewed. It will remain in that state that it was before you were born again. Behold, all things become what? Is that true? Or was God lying to us? I got the privilege again to go on the street with a group Friday night. And it was a tough night because of the brokenness of people and the bondage of people that I, I could see in the spirit. I was a little bit undone. I was sitting back just fighting off tears, just watching. You know what I saw the most? People were bound. They had addiction problems. It was all over them. You could just see it. But they didn't want to get rid of the addiction because they found comfort in it. And there'll be some of you sitting here saying, well, they want to be where they are and they're doing what they want to do and they can get out if they want really. Nine times out of 10, they have come to somebody or they've come to some church or they've said something to somebody in the church or they've been in the church and they feel like God has failed them. And I'm using the name church, saying the term church loosely. I don't mean the building. I mean the sons and daughters of those who say that they're sons and daughters. I don't let people off the hook anymore. If you're saying something, I need to see the fruit because that's how I know you. Otherwise, you're not being truthful to me or to yourself. Isn't that what James says? Be a doer of the word and not a hearer only, deceiving your own self. Have I said anything untrue so far? <laughs> I wish you could feel what I feel sometimes. He talks about the Holy Spirit, the comforter, the helper. Some people don't believe that we should have the Holy Spirit or if you got the Holy Spirit when you were born again and you don't need anything else and we got all of this stuff going on and how we interpret what he says instead of, and then you've got to live like I live and you got to walk like I, no, I don't. I have to walk in the footsteps of Christ. I'm not trying to be like none of you all. And you shouldn't be trying to be like me or any man that you know. Are you hearing me? But this is what we've got, right? Look at me. Come to the pastor. Woo, woo, woo. Praise. Yeah, yeah, praise the pastor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a, that's a wonderful man up there, man. He's just speaking that word. Woo, 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 woo. Oh, pastor, oh, pastor, oh, pastor. And you come in every day and you're not changed, you're not transformed. You're supposed to come together. It's supposed to be a place of trans transformation. He says, if you come to a two or more, gather together in my what? Character, my authority, my power. He says, there am I in the midst. What does he mean? He means I manifest myself in my glory. Isn't that what they did when they were dedicating the temple? They came together in his name, correct? These people did not have the Rokokodesh, the Holy Spirit, dwelling inside of them. 
They were not the temples. They were building a physical temple. Yet they came together on one accord to give God glory and honor. And he showed up everywhere that they did that he manifested himself in these scriptures. Is that correct? Go study it for yourself. Then why are we not having that every Sunday? We're looking and praying for revival when we are dead inside. Hello? Every time we come in to worship him and give him his verse and we bow down before him with pure hearts, he shows up. Whether you feel him or not, I do. And I'm telling you, it's more than possible. It's his will. Okay, John 15. Let's go to John 15. Just turn the page. I'm telling you, you're not going to get out of this. Starting at verse, I'm going to start at verse 7. He says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. But this, by this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. This is crazy. This is stupid. This is not consistent with what I've been taught. This says, Nathan, if I ask him and he will hear me and give it to me. This says, right here, Nathan, this says, my father is glorified in the prayers that you pray to him that he can answer. Why is this? I submit to you because when you pray in his name, you're praying his will, not something for yourself. I've been taught to pray stuff for myself, what I want. What about what he wants? I'm telling you, I was driving home from working at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, and I was on the causeway, and I was crying out to God. I said, Lord, what is it that you would have me to do? How can I be more of a service to you? And I was overwhelmed by the Holy Spirit, and I pulled over, and I was speaking. I started speaking and praying in tongues. And I said, Lord, I need to hear what you're saying because I need this, this interpretation, whatever it is, because it was stirring me to my core. And when I started understanding and speaking it in English, I was praying for, guess what, Israel. Praying for the government and the leadership like he asked us to do, right? In the spirit. And then... I cried and erupted in tears because the Holy Spirit was praying. Father, I know you see them and you hear them, but they're only praying what they want. What about what you want? Changed my prayers altogether differently from that point on. The Holy Spirit was interceding and saying, what about what you want? Because he heard the prayers coming up to the Father, which should be the praise and the worship and the prayers of sweet smelling incense. But it's like, Dad, Daddy, I need, I need, I need, I want, I want, I want, I want, I want, I want. Bless me, bless me, bless me, bless me, bless me, bless me. You're already blessed. How about thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You're awesome, 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 awesome. Okay. Let me keep reading. I'm going to get through it. Uh, verse 9. As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love, and I will. And if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love, we cannot get away from obedience we obey not to get things. We obey not to check off uh, something on a checklist. We obey because we're motivated, because we love him. His love has been shed abroad in our heart. And because we love him, we obey. No other reason. You're doing it for any other reason other than that. You're wrong. I'm just going to put it out there. Deal with it. Go to the Father on me, please. You're motivated and you move by love. You cannot forgive without love. If you're holding on to offenses, you're a murderer, according to the scriptures. This is what Yeshua is saying, not me. So does he give you the ability to get rid of the offenses? He does. So you don't have to hold them and be in bondage. I'm free. You're free. 
but your identity has been stolen. And the words that comes out of our mouths is bondage, 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 bondage. I can't, I can't, I can't. How many times are you going to tell somebody you can't or tell yourself you can't when he says you can't? How many times are you going to listen to somebody tell you who you are instead of believing what God says you are? It comes with the territory, persecution, mocking, putting you down, trying to beat you to the ground, trying to stop you from being who he's called you to be. Stop letting people do that to you. Stop letting rejection be your mantra or whether you speak to someone or not. You've already been accepted in the beloved according to the scriptures. Hello? I know I am. That's why I talk the way I talk. That's why when people curse at me and, and say all kind of crazy stuff at me and they start yelling at me and giving me attitude, I just smile at them. You know why I smile at them? Because they're not hurting me. You know why? They're not attacking me because they don't know me. They're attacking what they see in me. Because what's in them is something of darkness. And light and darkness can't occupy the same place. Can't, right? Greater, greater the darkness, greater the but they don't share a space. <laughs> Are you following me? So people have been bothering you, getting on your nerves. <laughs> it's because of what's in you. Not your personality. Quit taking it personal. Sow your own seed. Well, I'm sorry that you're upset, but praise the Lord. You want me to pray for you? No, I don't want you to pray for me. I've had people... <laughs> Get away from my house. Get away from my house. I said, okay, 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 okay. And I walk over here about two steps. Father, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> I said, I don't want you to pray, but I thank you, Father, that I hear that voice, and I just keep on praying and saying the word. You know, because this is what's happening. They're trying to get you to be quiet. We've been quiet too long as it is. That's why we're in the hell we're in now, because we've been silent. Hello? And I'm not talking about Somebody standing up here preaching. I'm talking about us as individuals. We've just been quiet, right? I'm starting to believe. I'm asking many Christians to get mad at me. Why don't you speak? Why don't you say? Why don't you pray for people? Well, I, 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 I said, you're scared? Or you don't know what you're talking about? Challenging, I know. I'm telling you, I'm not letting you get away. Go, oh, Holy Spirit. Mm, mm, mm. Verse 11, these things have I spoken to you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love is no one than this, that he laid down his life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. Keep saying that, man. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends for all things that I have heard of my father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you that you love one another. Go ahead. Now let's go to John chapter 17. Just turn the page. Holy Spirit has made this very simple for me and very simple for you. This is what I call the Lord's Prayer. I'm just going to go ahead and read it from the beginning, okay? Now, here, here, why I call it the Lord's Prayer. You'll hear it once you read it. So Jesus spoke the words, lift up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, for your Son also may be may glorify you. As you gave him authority, <laughs> over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is eternal life, that, you may know, that they may know you, not know about you, but they may know you, have an experiential knowledge of you, the only true God and Yeshua HaMashiach, whom you have sent. I have glorified you on this earth. I have finished the work in which you have given me to do. And now, O oh Father, glorify me together with yourself with the glory which I 
had with you before the world was. I have manifested your name to men <laughs> whom you have given me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now you have no, now they have known that all things which you have given me are from you. For I have given them the words which you have given me, and they have received them and have known surely that I came forth from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours, all and all mine are yours and all yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. Now I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to you. All right, praise the Lord. I knew it was going to be something. Holy Father, <laughs> keep them through your, what? Keep them through your name, your character, your authority, your power. Keep them in who you are, not in who they are. Are you seeing a pattern here? I, to, I, I stole a phrase from Tom Bradford. He says there's a biblical pattern. Do you see the biblical pattern here? Is it not clear? Are you missing anything? Keep them through your name. Those who have, you have given me that they may be one as we are. That they may be what? One as we are. It kind of defeats the theory that he's way out there and he's not a part of you and he doesn't know everything that you think and everything that you are. Who told you that? Who told you that you weren't one with him when you were born again? Who told you that when you, when you just, just hold on to God's unchanging hands and it's all going to be all right, but they didn't tell you all hell was going to break loose in your life? They didn't tell you that every day of your life and all every week of your life that you will be tested and tried, that the enemy will try to steal your identity, your purpose. Because if he steals your identity, you will be of non effect for the kingdom of God. You'll come to church on Sunday, maybe go to a midweek service, maybe go to a fellowship, and then that's it. Ooh, I'm good. I checked it out. I'm so saved. Yeah. Verse 12. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those whom you gave me, I have kept, and none of them is lost except the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. Now, you all agree with me that the word is true, right? That God is not going to lie to you, correct? You believe that he, he looks over his word to perform it until it bears fruit? You believe that? If he spoke a word, he's going to bring it to pass? You believe that? I need you to say yes. yes. Okay. So yes. So you believe that. Okay. Here's, here's my point. Or here's his point. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Here's his point. Verse 14. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the what? World. So are you still of the world? Listen, if you're not of the world, that means you don't act like it. it don't mean, that means you don't compromise with it. Hello? That means you stick out like a sore thumb. Hello? You're supposed to be seen. You're supposed to be different. Right? Am I right? Y'all yes. looking at me like, what is he talking about? You're supposed to be different. You're not supposed to be like everybody else. And God made you one perfect individual to do your part. Body has many members, right? But one? One body. Many members, but one? I'm speaking like this because a lot of us have the mindset of like, we are this body, but bump the rest of them. And they're saying the same thing about you. Is that right? Okay. Just want to make sure I'm on the same, on the right planet. <clears throat> 
They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Are you of the world, or were you born again into the kingdom? Are you waiting to get to the kingdom, or has the kingdom already been planted in you? Are you a child of the kingdom now, or are you waiting? Are you a child of the kingdom now, or are you waiting? Most people are waiting. Oh, come, Lord Jesus, take us out of this. What? Seriously? How about doing your part until he comes? Just saying. All right. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world. This is the prayer of our Savior. But that you will keep them from the evil one. So did he leave you protected? Gave you armor. He talked about armor, didn't he? Huh? Helmet of what? Breastplate of belt of truth? Feet sharp with the shield of and the sword of the, which is the what? Is the word meant to be spoken? Mm-hmm. And what is the armor? Yeah, you're sure. You put on Christ. Salvation. Righteous. Truth. Peace. Walk by faith, not by sword of the spirit. You put on Christ. Come on. He is the word. Who is the word? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth, for your what is truth? So what are you going to be sanctified by? The word. Again, Paul writes, and he says, faith, faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God, that's why Lester always says, speak the word what? Out loud, because faith comes by hearing and hearing what? The word, right? Remember me telling you this? So does doubt, so does bondage, comes by what comes out of your mouth, because your ears hear it and your mind receives it. So you're either going to speak the, speak the truth or speak a lie. You're going to speak what you see or call those things that are not as though they were by faith. No matter the outcome. Hello? The outcome is not up to you and I, is it? But it is our responsibility to speak it, isn't it? And speak what? The word of God. So you're sanctified by the word. Your tongue is sanctified. Your ears are sanctified. Woo! It's what you see, what you hear. Because it all comes into your heart, which is your, in scripture, your what? Mind. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may show what is his good, perfect, and acceptable will. Is that right? Am I talking crazy? I'm all over the place, Brian. What, what am I talking about here? Okay, let me finish reading. Where, where am I at? Where am I? Verse 20, you all agree with me that he looks over his word to perform it and bring it to the end. This is what he says, the Savior says. Verse 20, I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe me through their word. I do not pray for just these disciples that I have here, but for those who will believe me through their word. Word. The reproduction system of the body of Messiah, the body of Christ, are the believers, the ambassadors, the sons and the daughters that keep going out and doing what they've been called to do, and the body increases. That's how it's designed to work. You saw him pray to protect you from the evil one. Go as I go, but you know what we don't believe? that we are one with him as he was one with the Father because we don't believe that that's possible. He'll come back one day for a church that is, if I'm correct, correct me if I'm wrong, spotless and without blemish. Paul says something just stupid and crazy. He writes in Romans, he says, hmm, if you walk in the spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the I don't know what that means. There must be some caveat to that somewhere. 
something that tells me that I can't walk in the spirit or something that tells me I can't <laughs> obey him in love, something that tells me that somewhere down the line, I'm going to mess up. If you're always looking to mess up, guess what? You're going to mess up. If you always wake up in the morning with praise on, with your praise on, guess what? You got your praise on. You set the tone for the day. And guess what? When you start facing a trial or tribulation, or listen, if the thought, fiery darts, if a thought comes to your mind based on your who you were, not who you are, and if you respond with that to that thought by lifting up the shield of faith to quench it and say what he says you are and what you know he's made you to be, then guess what? That dart has nowhere to land. Hallelujah. Because it's been quenched by faith. So you know what I do? I don't go around rebuking thoughts that come to my mind or something all the time. I just laugh and say, thank you, Father, that's not who I am anymore. That that thought doesn't belong here. Hallelujah. And guess what? It's gone. He has to come back another day. He's going to keep coming. When he tempted Messiah in the wilderness, he said he left for a more opportune time after he was done with the temptation. <laughs> and what did he use in the wilderness when he was tempted? He said, using the sword of the spirit, he said what? It is and then he said what was. And then the devil had to go to the next thing. And he said, it is written. And he had to go to the next. Do you see the pattern? Did he not show you how to do it? This is the way we do it. This, oh, I thought that song, well, I can't do that, yeah. <laughs> this is how we do it. Yeah, that album. <laughs> Woo! Verse 20. I'm finished. I'm almost finished. For I, pray for, I pray not for these alone, but also for those who will believe on me through their word, that they all may be one, that they all may be what? One. As you, Father, are in me and I in you, that, the world, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me because of how my people are representing me and bearing my name and my identity. Is this not what this is saying? Is somebody seeing something different? Again, go to the Lord on me. I love when people go to the Lord on me. Yes, I love that. <sighs> And the glory which you have gave me, I have given them. What are we talking about? Holy Spirit. That they may be one just as we are one. I and them, you and me, that they may be made perfect in one. That the world may know that I, that you have sent me and, I, <laughs> and have loved them as you have loved me. Mark 16, last scriptures. And then I'm done. Have I been up here too long? How am I doing on time? <sighs> you know what's coming. Your goodness is running after me. It's running after me. Oh, glory to your name. And Yeshua says, verse 15, and he said to them, go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my what? And my character and my authority and my power and my name. They will cast out what? Demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will take up serpents and they will drink anything deadly. It will by no means hurt them. 
They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. That's the commission. But it all has a starting point. And that starting point is with realizing whose name that you bear. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's about him. And you're going to need that gift of that Holy Spirit. You're going to need discernment in this day. Because Scripture always talks about signs as well. They come from the enemy, don't they? And you remember, I can't remember where it is in the gospel, but there were those who said, did I not cast out demons in your name? Did I not heal the sick in your name? And he's going to say, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity, for I know you not. If you're doing things for your own gain, wrong old sports fans, repent. And one of the things I've watched, I've watched it over the years in ministry, men get puffed up because they get used in a gift or so. You pray for somebody, they get, they get healed. And a lot of times you can keep on praying for people and people getting healed it's because of their faith. <laughs> Is that right? I'm required to speak the word and what it says and speak the truth and what it says and the rest is up to who? One plants, one waters. Who gives the increase? But what is the planting and the watering? It's the same thing, right? We can't get away from what we say. I'm not going to be lied to anymore. I'm not going to be deceived anymore. I know him. My greatest desire is for everybody that hears the sound of my voice to know him in an intimate way. Because if you do, nothing can shake you Nothing could bring you back in bondage. You will not be in bondage. You can't go back into bondage no matter what happens to you. How can a man like Paul, as smart as he was, be stoned and get up and go back and finish preaching the gospel? The witness accounts of Stephen's face when he was stoned, like the face of an angel. He must have smiled when he saw the glory of God, even though he was being hit with stones. <sighs> Greatest trial I've ever had. You want to know what it was? Can I tell you? Greatest anguish in my life is when God got quiet on me for a while. He didn't let me hear his voice. I was undone, crying and weeping every day. He was just silent. But you know what it fueled in me? A hunger to always be in his presence. Not for miracles, signs, and wonders. That's just a fruit of obedience in my life. But wanting him, just time with him, quiet. You know what I do every morning when I come here in the mornings? I just worship. And I get in his presence and I cry. I pray. I worship. Just spending some time with him. Don't you want him? This is a marriage. Marriage without intimacy is not a marriage at all. Am I right? I'm keeping it as simple as I can. Well, how do you do it? Turn the dog on TV off. <laughs> put the phone down. <laughs> Go get in the room. Put on some praise and worship music or not. And just say, Father, I just want you. 
and you'll find that he's wanted you all along. <laughs> huh? And this is what you can't do. If you don't feel him in the first five minutes or you get up and move and he hadn't moved, that you're, you're like done. You know, that's not real. And you go back to thinking like you used to think. <laughs> Boy. Any questions about anything I've covered? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Holy Father, um, done what you've asked me to do. I've given them what they've all read before, what they've all heard before. And I believe that those that are supposed to be here are here. It's their responsibility for responding to it or not. I'm not calling anybody out. I'm not even calling them to the front if they don't want to come. But just have your way in each and every one here. And may they begin to multiply you in this earth while they yet abide and have breath in their bodies. May they be an expression of who Jesus the Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, is. Please join in with us today. Show your support and bless God's people by heading on over to holylandmarketplace.com. Join with us in worship and enjoy God's word at Seat of Abraham Fellowship.